Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 5. So the first thing you need to do is go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software and download the Raspberry Pi imager. Now I'm going to show you how to do this for Windows and for Linux as well. So download for Windows in this case. Close down the web browser, open a file explorer, double click on the imager, select yes, click install and then click finish and Raspberry Pi Imager should start automatically. And there it is. So that's Raspberry Pi Imager installed on Windows. I'm going to show you the same thing using Linux. So I'm using Debian here, but you can use any Debian based distribution such as Ubuntu or Linux Mint. So if I open Firefox, go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software, you're at the same place again. And I'm going to do the download for Ubuntu and that's downloaded straight away. So I've opened up a terminal, I'm going to go to the downloads folder and I'm going to type sudo tpkg minus i and then the name of the Debian package. And then all I have to do is type sudo rbi imager and we're at the same place as we are in Windows. Now what you'll need at this point is you will need a SD card in an SD card reader or you'll need a USB drive if you're going to install it to a USB drive. I recommend using an external USB drive, preferably an external SSD because they boot a lot faster than the SD card and they're more reliable. So the first thing you want to do is click on the choose device and you want to choose the Raspberry Pi 5. You can of course do it to a Raspberry Pi 4, I don't recommend doing it to anything less than that. Click choose operating system and scroll down to other general purpose OS. And then you want to click on Ubuntu. And there's two options available, there's a desktop version and there is the server version. For this tutorial you want to choose the desktop version. We're going to click that, we're going to choose the storage. And in this case, I'm going to be choosing this SSD here and then click next. So this doesn't matter whether you're using Windows or Linux. It's the same tool, the Raspberry Pi Imager. And you click next and say yes. It's now going to write Ubuntu to the device that you selected. When you first boot into Ubuntu, it's going to ask you your language. Uh, so you're at the welcome screen, choose your language, click continue. Then it's going to ask for your keyboard layout, choose your keyboard layout and click continue. And then it's going to ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi. So you can choose to do this or not. Um, you can see I have. Enter your Wi-Fi password and click continue. And now choose where you are in the world. Just click on the map where you are or you can choose from the drop downs. And then it's setting up a user time. So enter a, your name and a username, a name for your PC and then enter the password that you want to use to log in with. You can choose to log in automatically or um, but I don't recommend doing this. Click continue and now Ubuntu will install to your system. You are now at the login screen, just click your username, enter the password you used to set up Ubuntu in the first place and then you will log in to Ubuntu. Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi is using Wayland. Uh, there is an X11 desktop that you can switch to, but um, it doesn't work automatically. Um, so uh, the only screen recording software I could get to work is OBS Studio. So the first screen you'll get to is this welcome screen and it asks you to connect to your online accounts. It's up to you whether you do that or not. Now you'll be asked, uh, do you want to help improve Ubuntu? It's up to you whether you do that or not. Again, um, select the option you choose and then move on. Now you'll be asked to select your privacy settings. Uh, it's up to you again which um, option you choose. I tend to leave it off. And finally, you're ready to go. And that is it. That is Ubuntu set up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.